step number seven is to normalize the database model. So we want to go through the diagram and consider every attribute. We're going to normalize to the third normal form. So the first normal form, we want to make sure that all attributes are atomic. All right, if they're not, we're going to break them down into their atomic parts. Once we get them in their atomic parts, they can just stay in the same entity that they're in. We remove any multi-valued attributes. So let's just look for atomic and multi-valued attributes. So we know we moved out phone number. But we look at each one and say, have we removed each one? And are they all atomic? And sure enough, we look through there and they all pass that. Second normal form. This form only applies when entities have a composite primary key. So this is the only one we have to deal with. And it's specific, oh no, these two. And both of them, and the, the, what you say is that each attribute directly related to the entire primary key. And we don't have any attributes that are not the primary key. So second normal form on this one is done. The next one is third normal form. And this one asks, is an attribute dependent on another non-key attribute. So what we need to do is we need to look at the non-key attributes, so the non-primary key attributes, and we need to say, is it dependent? If I change the last name, do I also have to change the password? And you don't. So password is not dependent on last name. If I change the account type, does that force a change in the main branch? And it doesn't. So there's not a dependency here. And you can go through each individual attribute. If I change the account, does it change the amount? And it doesn't. So if we're making, if we decide we want to do it to another account, it doesn't force us to change the amount. So there's no dependencies between those ones. And you ask that question for every non-primary key field. And if we go through each of these individually, if we change the city, does that force a change in the state? And it doesn't. It might the state might stay the same, it might change, but it doesn't it doesn't force it, so it's not a dependency. And if we look through all of these attributes and ask that question, the only one two that we're gonna find is this one. If if I change the question, the security question, will I also have to change the answer? And these two are dependent because the answer is directly related to that question. So here we have a dependency between de dependency on a non-primary key field. So this question answer, these question answer pairs break third normal form. So we're going to have to make some changes. And that's going to include moving things around. So I'm going to pause this while I move some table, make room for this new table. There, now that I have some space, I can drag on a new table. All right, so in this new table, I'm going to bring these dependent values over. So question and answer are the dependent ones. And I'm going to create I'm going to create one table that replaces this question and answer and this question and answer. So we want to so here we've done the first step, create a new entity and move the attribute related group of attributes to this new entity and then copy the primary key of the original entity, that's this one, over as a foreign key in this one. So here we have user here as a foreign key in this table. All right, now we want to decide on the primary key. User ID is unique, but if we're going to have two questions in here for each user, that means user that same user ID would be in here twice. So it cannot be the primary key. Question cannot be the primary key because that question might be used over and over again by many users. An answer certainly can't be the primary key because we have no idea if users will use the same answer or not. If we don't allow the user to select the same question for question one and question two, then the combination of question and user ID would produce a primary key. So let's work towards that assumption. That will make user ID primary key and foreign key and question a primary key. So I'm going to get the other table and rebuild this. And there I've updated it with a table that allows pr primary key and foreign key in the same, in that left-hand side. 
Okay, so now we have this combination of user ID and question is the primary key. User ID is a foreign key. So I can draw, take a, a connecting line up here. So we know that every entry in the question answer table will be related to exactly one user. And so we can put the exactly one on that end. And we know that every user is related to exactly two question answer records. And the way we say two is with many, one to many, because it can't be zero, two can't be zero. And I'm going to name this security question. One last thing to do is to get rid of the attributes over here, because we moved them out of this table because of a dependency. So we want that to get downsized for third normal form. Introduce a new table to get rid of that dependency. Remove the remove those attributes from that table. Add the connecting line and verify the multiplicities. And then we've got our diagram in third normal form.